Welcome to Needham School Spotlight. I'm Dan Goodykant, Superintendent of Schools. Joining me today are several students and one of their teachers from the Greater Boston Project, a new interdisciplinary learning initiative at Needham High School. I want to welcome Carolyn Gottwals, Tommy Kelly, L Elizabeth Larkin, Ellie Raubach, and Julia Shannon, and one of their teachers, Mr. James Odierna. Thank you for joining me today. Well, so I want to get right into it and Ellie ask you what exactly is the Greater Boston Project? Well, the Greater Boston Project is an interdisciplinary course which uses elements from English class like uh, analyzing documents and written communication as well as elements from math classes like mathematical modeling and statistical analysis and then also a large amount of history where we explore the history of Boston through different eras. And so this class, new class this year for seniors, there are about 60 students, I would say, involved. 50, 50 students involved. Um, what were, you know, what was the big, the big theme, Mr. Rowe? What, was the, what were the key learning objectives and goals of this program? We had basically three major enduring understandings. One was focusing on culture and change, looking at kind of Boston over time and how Boston's evolved from its inception, uh, who kind of caused those changes, what were the impacts of those changes, how did those changes occur. That was kind of a, a really big focus was, was on change, uh, finishing with the students kind of making their own change in, in the community uh, with their community action projects. And then we also focused on identity and perception, which really looks at how different people and subsets of people view themselves and each other relative to, to other people in the population. And then the third thing was really looking at 21st century skills. So we really wanted the students to learn how to utilize technology, integrate technology, how to become good collaborators and work in groups, how to do presentations, oral communication. So those were all kind of connected with the, you know, the subject specific skills that Ellie mentioned earlier. So how did the five of you and your 45 classmates, how, how did you pick this class? I mean, last year about this time, you were signing up for classes senior year. Senior year is a key, junior year is a big year, but senior year is a key year because there's a lot going on and you had some options for courses you wanted to take. Um, tell me, how did you happen to sign up for this class? Why this class and not something else? Um, I think I chose this class mainly because it isn't like a typical English class. So I'd spent the past three years like reading classic literature and analyzing that in a really traditional sense. And I thought that like analyzing historical documents and finding information and learning about something that's really relevant to me and my life personally um, would be interesting. And I think adding on to Carrie's point, um, what drew me in was the CAP project. I remember Mr. O and the other teachers talking about this community action project that we were going to do at the end of the year. And I felt like that was something new and um, something that I had never heard of before. And I really wanted to participate in that. And also, uh, the teachers came and talked to us during a homeroom period um, last year um, to sort of drum up interest for the class. And I think that was sort of the time that a lot of people saw that it was going to be a non-traditional class. And after going through three years of, of sort of the same classes over and over, it was nice to sort of switch it up. And, and as I understand it, the, uh, Julia, the class really, it was three classes, and you received credit for English and social studies and math. Um, what, what, what made you want to sign up for the class? Well, I took it, like Tommy said, to get outside of the traditional classroom. And what also really drew me in was the English and history because I like both classes and um, usually in English class we don't do much history so I wanted to combine the two and the math brought me into. I think that interdisciplinary learning piece where you brought English and history together and then and then math um, was, was seems like that was something that was intriguing to you and that you enjoyed being able to bring those two together. Have you had other, I mean there probably haven't been too many experiences at, at Edom High for you to bring those subjects together. Has that ever happened before? Tommy, you mentioned one of the first math assignments we did in the year. Really early on, we did an exploration looking at kind of uh, education data. And uh, I believe you went home and had some comments about, you know, using the math relative to, to actually actual data uh, compared to what you've done in, in past math classes. you want to speak a little bit yeah. more? Yeah. So my first assignment, what I didn't do a good job of um, on this project was I sort of just looked at the data objectively. Um, and I saw, like, oh, there was an average here. I believe we made a histogram. Uh, or something of that sort. I forget what the assignment you're talking about is. But uh, we 
we made a graph, and I talked about the graph and that data, but I sort of didn't apply it to what we were learning at the time and the themes of the unit. And so by the end of the year, I think one thing we all did a lot better was uh, sort of pick up on the themes and be able to look at data and apply it to the context of the situation, which is something that we hadn't really learned about in, in other math classes. In other math classes, uh, you sort of get a problem uh, that's just so you can practice that math. But in this case, you're learning the math so that you can apply it. And I think that was something that was really helpful and to apply learn. to a, a real situation yeah. and, and real data and real numbers that represent real people or, or historical, uh, um, within a historical context. Um, so I, j I understand, and I know a couple times I'd look out my office window and, and you guys are traipsing off around town or heading <laughs> off to the, the tea um, to go to Boston. So tell me, Ellie, a little bit about what, what, what did you do in Boston? What did you, what, what did you take away from this course that's a, a learning from you about your experience in Boston? Yeah, so during the course, we took a lot of field trips and would go into Boston and say, go to the Boston Public Library or the West End Museum. And there are a lot of other uh, historical and educational places we visited within Boston. And the Boston Public Library, I really enjoyed going that. And I learned a lot about research skills because we got to go into the historical old book section, and I got to touch a book from the 1600s, and that Everybody just- Everybody gets to do that, I guess, by the way. You had to yeah. have special permission to be there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, we, we, had to, we had these like, interesting like, book wedges with which to, to hold the book, and uh, it was very interesting, and I thought you know, a lot about primary sources and what that means. And also going to the West End Museum, that was really cool because I, Never knew that Boston had like a, a big redevelopment in the West End where uh, the city kind of kicked out a lot of people just to, to make it nicer or appeal to upper class people. And, and I didn't know that and that museum was really interesting and eye opening. So those were some of the things I got out from uh, various field trips. But, uh, what else was uh, key, uh, Julia, when you think about Boston? What was a takeaway from, from you, your experience with this course in, in Boston and, and its history? Um, I think that <clears throat> being able to go to Boston and have these types of field trips really brought the history alive for me. And it wasn't so much distant as it was we were living it right then. And we were able to see, like Ellie said, the different books from the different eras and be able to touch them and be able to see different artifacts from the earlier eras. Um, and I think that was really cool to be able to bring history alive and not only just read about it, but be able to see it. Yeah, adding on to Julia's point, um, I remember one time we went to the Mass Historical Society and we were reading um, a diary. I can't remember who the person was at this point, but he wrote about um, like the weather every day. So on like the right side, he had like notes from meetings he had attended. On the left side, he just wrote the weather. And it was a reminder that like these people were real. Uh, you know, you hear about the important accomplishments they made, but they also like you know ate breakfast every morning, mm -hmm. and it like really brought it all alive. It's some real prosaic and mundane things that people <laughs> do. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And I also think what was really important is I we've I've lived away like 20 minutes away from Boston my whole life, but I don't know the city that well. Um, I don't know its history, but I also don't really know its geography. Don't really know where things it are. Um, so going in there really helped with that. You know, we took the train in, we walked around, so I really got a much better feel for the city, um, which is something really nice to have um, going forward in the future. Yeah. And we didn't just, it was just, it's Greater Boston too, so we didn't just use Boston. So do you guys want to talk about Needham also? Yeah. So we also went to the Needham Historical Society, and that was really eye-opening for me because I never have really thought about Needham as a town, like, back in the 1600s and when Needham and Wellesley was actually combined. So getting to see like the maps and everyone trying to find out where they live and comparing it um, to now is really interesting. Well, and it's fortunate, just as an aside, that Needham, you know, kind of got rid of that part of the <laughs> land that we may call it Wellesley now that we didn't need or want anymore. So that was, that was, a, that was a key thing. West Needham. Yeah, yeah West <laughs> Needham. Uh, well, I, I think, Tommy, I'm glad you said that about getting out to see the city. You know, we live sometimes so close to the city and, and, and not really able to experience or appreciate the, the, its rich history and, and even where Needham High School sits. I believe it had a role to play in Boston's history because part of the land from Needham High School is built in part of the Back Bay, I guess, uh, that, that's existing now. So, um, well, 
you, you, each one of you mentioned the, um, the CAP project, um, the Community Action Plan. So I, I know as you, as you studied the Greater Boston and its history and, and literature and its people and, and what made things happen, um, you used that learning to shape something of your own. Now, I, I want you to describe a little bit about what, what that was all about. What, what, uh, was that a culminating event? Was it something you did early on? Did you have to take the course first to know how to, to get there? What, describe a little bit about what the CAP program is first, and then we can dig into some of the different program, projects you did. Um, so the CAP project in general was looking at or taking what we've learned from the year and seeing how you know change has been affected throughout Boston and implement, implementing that into our school or our community, what a change that we thought we could make. Um, so I think that you know, we started towards the end of the year, but I pulled from um, what I had learned earlier because I you know learned about I saw you know changes that have been made like filling in the back bay. We looked at that whole process and you know from the people who had the idea to make this happen to the people who you know ran the trains to transfer the dirt to make it happen. Um, so I think the most important thing that I took from the CAP project as a whole was seeing you know the ideas of like change that can be made and people saying oh this would be better if it were you know such and such way and actually taking action and making a change happen. So before I get into the the, um, the specifics of your ca your, your your caps, um, the different eras. Remind me again, I know we were talking about them doing a countdown. What were the different eras that you studied for, from you know, back then till now? Go ahead. Okay, uh, we did the colonial unit first. Okay. Where we you know, talked about colonial times with the Puritans and how the Puritans interacted with the Native Americans. And so we looked at the interaction between those groups and how that slowly grew into uh, more Protestant people joining the city. And then after the colonial era, we did the pre-revolutionary era, where uh, Boston was closer to, you know, the American Revolution, where Boston was a much larger city than it was, you know, in the, six, in the 1600s. And there were a lot more Protestants, and the city was just really functioning. And we looked at all the events that led up to the revolution and how a lot of those had a really strong presence and impact within Boston, like the uh, so-called Boston Massacre that happened and how that affected the rest of the United States. And from there, after that, you? Uh, we went into the antebellum unit. Okay. Um, so we looked at, well, I was just focusing on my final portfolio of the racial tension in that area. Um, but it was the Civil War and um, slavery and the conflict, but specifically surrounding Boston. And then after the antebellum area, Big jump. Yeah, <laughs> then we went to the urban unit. Okay. Um, and move, fo move forward into the 20th century, okay. Mm -hmm. um, and a big part of that was talking about the Boston busing and how that affected Boston's community and the racial tensions. And then? And then we went on to talk about today. Um, and that sort of culminated where the, the CAP project was. Um, and we used today to sort of look back on all the other units we had we had studied and compare them and see what the differences are. Um, and that's how we sort of segued into the CAP project. So within each one of those eras, there were different projects or initiatives or, or things that had to happen. <coughs> and you learned about how folks had an idea and then how they made it uh, come to fruition. Um, or perhaps it, it, it didn't come to fruition. <laughs> uh, that, that happened too. Um, so you each then tackled uh, with a with a group. I want each one of you to just take a moment to, to describe what you did. So, what, Julia, why don't you describe what what was your? <coughs> so it was the the community action plan or CAP. Mm -hmm. So. Um, okay, do? so my group was actually only a group of three, and most other groups were probably about five or six people. Um, we worked on swimming safety initiative, and we called our project "Swimming Saves Lives." Um, we incorporated both social media by adding a Facebook page and trying to really promote um, safety in the water. Uh, and we wanted to, pr our goal was basically to prevent drowning or try to get the awareness out about this issue that's both in our community and just in the nation. Um, and we, our goal was to make a one day free swim clinic <coughs> for people of the greater Boston community, specifically Hyde Park, that's the area we focused. Um, and right now we are in the process of um, trying to find a date for that to work and really just put it into motion. 
Um, and I really took away all the different communication skills that I learned, how to uh, really you know, talk with my superiors and how to present my ideas very clearly and efficiently. And I think that was a huge takeaway from this project. Great. Tommy, how about you? Um, my group, I had five other people in my group, and we worked on sort of a closer community, our school community. We tried to reduce the traffic in the morning. Um, and so basically what we did is... In, on Admiral Gracie. Okay. Um, we looked at it as a whole and then decided that Admiral Gracie was a problem. You know, kids are getting to school late because of, of the traffic issue. So we focused on that. And um, what we basically did was every morning, pretty much every morning, rain, rain or shine, we would be outside uh, seeing how long it took cars to, to get up the hill, seeing how many cars were coming. Um, so we collected a lot of data, and then we talked with uh, Dr. Peasy and Mr. Seacott and Officer Springer and some other officials about uh, the best possible plan going forward. And the goal is to have a trial period of, of one of the ways to reduce traffic here. How about you, Carolyn? What did um, you my CAT project fo focused on reducing waste here at Needham High. Um, so I worked in a group of six people. And at first, we investigated all the like, types of waste that we could reduce. Um, so we looked at the electrical um, system here at Needham High. We looked at water. And then we ended up deciding to focus on food waste and um, plastic waste. So that kind of led us towards a recycling and like composting initiative. Um, so we looked in first to implementing a compost system in the cafeteria. Um, and logistically, we didn't really have the time to um, implement that and make it successful. So we've passed that on to um, the environmental club here at the high school. Um, so hopefully that will get going for them. Um, we gave them all of our like research and previous work. Um, and my group then moved on to work on increasing availability to the recycling here at Needham High. Um, so we've made posters that remind people um, that Needham co-mingles. So all plastic and glass and paper can go into the same recycling bin. And we've worked to increase the availability of recycling bins and waste bins around the school. Good, good. Um, Elizabeth, what, uh, what did you tackle? Um, so my group focused on senior projects, actually. Um, our community action project is to get, is to allow every student to be able to do a community action project um, at the end of their senior year. And um, hopefully it will happen, the first group of people that will be able to participate in it are the sophomores now. But it would take place during a uh, fourth term and students would be able to drop a certain number of classes depending how intricate their proposal is. But students could be doing anything from an internship in a school or a hospital to creating a community action project that they think would benefit Needham High or Needham as a community. And um, we're still working out all the details, but we just met with the school committee and Dr. PZ, and they really liked it, so hopefully it will be able to be put in the program of studies. So you've been talking to a few people around school, including Dr. PZ and, mm -hmm. the, and the school council, to say this is what, here's an idea now. So how does that, how does that move forward when, as you head in, out the door? Well, how do you, who do you hand that off to? Um, Mr. Gallagher, the English head department, okay. is going to be like the head of the teacher council. And um, we are also going to hand it off to a group of sophomores okay. to try to get it working. How about you, Ellie? What was your project? Um, some similar to Liz, it focused on skills that we got in the Greater Boston Project and we wanted other people to have access to these 21st century skills. So one specific thing that we focused on was more uh, mathematical modeling and statistical analysis like Excel and other spreadsheet programs for uh, younger high schoolers because there were many times, for instance, in chemistry class where we had to make an Excel graph and like analyze it and no one knew how to do that and so we thought it'd be very valuable to uh, give those opportunities to the freshmen. So we've met with uh, a ton of school officials like the uh, interdisciplinary learning team and uh, Dr. Peasy. And our goal right now is trying to implement this in the freshman seminar for all of the freshmen that they have to take. And so we're passing this on to uh, Ms. Bookston and Ms. Parham's successor because uh, they are uh, two core people within the freshman seminar and uh, they're very, very open to this idea and this is uh, moving forward for us, so. Wow. Mr. O, yeah. so three teachers, you, Mr. Hutter, and, and uh, Mr. Uh, Brooks, were 
kind of led this charge to create this uh, to create this this class and and uh, provide this fabulous experience for these students. A lot of work involved. A lot of work. Yeah, to get it to pull it together. Yeah. I mean, you've been working on this for how long? Uh, it's been a little over two years. It started in March of, I guess, 2012. There was a, the NEF, Needham Education Foundation, has a large grant, kind of hoping to form more interdisciplinary learning at the high school. So there's a series of uh, steps, starting with a proposal process. So, you know, the kids got used to that as well. But we had to put a proposal together. A bunch of teachers put different proposals together. Uh, it got weaned down to three that were interviewed, and then two groups actually got to start to set up a curriculum and then eventually our class idea was selected to go forward and that was done actually this time two years ago is when we, the three of us found out that this class was going to be going forward so then we spent all that summer time last year and then all last summer and a lot of time and effort into kind of developing the curriculum how the classroom's going to look and, and all that stuff you know we did a lot of PR work last year to, to get this first class in so, you know, I think the main focus that we had was to say, all right, we want something kind of alternative for the students that will be a little bit more hands-on, uh, a little bit more preparing them for college and career readiness, uh, and really putting everything together rather than just the traditional the classroom setting. And, you know, obviously, what happens to the traditional classroom and all the things you learn in those courses are, are very important skills, and we're just trying to tie them all together and, and finish with a, a meaningful project at the end. So. Well, it, and it's, I mean, it's a ton of work, and I, uh, and I'm amazed, really, when I think about the five of you stepping up and saying, you know, you're interested, first of all, because of this interdisciplinary nature of this, uh, of this course, but you could have taken any number of other courses, and I know that you have other courses that you took and were successful in. How would you compare, and, and you may have an opinion on this as well, this course and the work you did with any of the other courses? Same amount of work, less amount of work. It was, uh, you know, it was a breeze. It was impossible. Where, where does it fall? I, I would say that it was more work than the other classes I'm taking, but all the other classes I'm taking are single block classes. Um, so I think one of the things that we forgot about a lot is that it's a double block class. So it sort of makes sense to have a little bit more homework. Um, but one thing I thought the teachers did a good job of is as the year went on, if we felt like we were doing you know, some of the homework we felt was busy work or we didn't feel like it was relating to the units that well. Um, and we told them in the surveys they gave out, they did a good job sort of changing that. So the portfolio at the beginning of the year, we always do a portfolio to sort of uh, summarize everything we've learned in a unit. And the portfolio at the beginning of the year was so much work. It was taking people a lot of time. It was a lot of new writing. Um, but by the end of the year, they really made it so that it was, you know, you were putting in writing you'd already done and just sort of reflecting on it. Um, and so they did a good job changing it to, to make it less work and make the work that we had, while it was still some work, make it more meaningful and interesting. How, how does this course compare to, because you're seniors, you're at Needham High School, thinking you know, about next steps in college and all that, and a year ago when you signed up, all those things were in your head, you know, where am I going to go, what am I going to do, what courses am I going to take. How does this compare to an advanced placement course, for example? I mean, they're, they're different, but... Um, <clears throat> well, I would say I took AP Psych this year, and I would say that this was a lot more work than AP Psych was. However, um, I do think that the whole idea of this class was being able to have more homework so that we could come into class the next day and really expand on that, and so we would have more curriculum than any other class that we've done before. And I remember when they had the homeroom um, meeting with all of us that they explained that we would be doing more work outside of class so that when we came to class we would be able to talk about it more and really get into discussions about it. So I think that's primarily the reason for all of the homework that we had. And so the work, I mean, you just said something that I imagine if there is a sophomore or junior watching this program saying, oh, geez, if it's more work than AP Psychology, <laughs> I'm not in. So what would you, what would you tell? Uh, and what did you tell juniors as they were going through course sign up about about this or what, what, what's your advice on, on this particular course? I think one thing you talked about you know the college aspect of this and how it uh, relates to APs and I'm in some other AP classes and one of the things I was nervous about is how this course would look on paper you know if it would be better if I just took a couple more AP classes right, right. Um, but I went when I got to my college interview in December uh, we spent an hour talking, and probably 30 of those minutes were talking just about the Greater Boston Project. 
um, my interviewer was really interested in it and I ended up getting into the school. So um, I really believe that it's, it's almost more meaningful than AP classes in that sense, that it sort of uh, shows you're, you're a different learner and you're willing to take some risks. Um, I think that the biggest difference between an AP course and this course is that an AP course is preparing for a big AP test, whereas this class is completely test free. Um, so it's a different type of work, but it's also just a completely different type of class. So comparing to the APs that I took, I would say I took AP Calc and AP Psych, <clears throat> and I would say that I had a pretty similar level of work across the, like, a similar average, I guess. Um, but, you know, the night before our GBP portfolios were due was a heavier night than, um, you know, it was just spaced differently. Yeah. Well, and I, I, I will tell you that a local university official from the Boston area, um, an admissions uh, director, uh, told me that the, the kind of students they're looking to admit are students who can do work like you are doing, not just those who are good test takers or can follow a specific curricula. I mean, advanced placement courses at Needham High School are wonderful and the teachers are trained and it's a fabulous experience. This kind of course is more geared really to what you'll be doing in college and, and beyond. So it, it, you really are pioneers in having done something that I hope a lot more Needham High School students will, you know, some might be a little nervous, but I think if we kind of get over that hump, they'll, they'll, they'll be more intrigued. Before we finish up and we have to wrap up in a moment, I want to, you've got Mr. O here, I know you provided a lot of feedback to him and, and to Mr. Hutter and to Mr. Brooks all year because they would tell me about, oh, my student, my greater Boston student telling me this or that. Here's an opportunity, one or two piece of ad, pieces of advice for next year and beyond for the course. What would you recommend to him um, or the school that, that you know, you, you ought to think, really think about this so that it, the course can be improved? Well, I think, um, I, kn I know just one thing, I guess this isn't really a specific thing, but listening to student feedback was like really important. And um, when that eventually happened, that was really important for the course and for the students to, to see and to hear that the teachers are listening and that like they do care and they are willing to, to like change certain things about the class or the curriculum uh, in order to like fit what the students are thinking. So I think that's like definitely important, and I know like we have done that this year. And so I just want to say, like, if 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 there's one thing we we were to continue from this class, like that, and I think that that'd be just you know really important. Good. Yeah. I I think one of the things I think uh, could make the class better is if the cap project went on for the full year. Um, we did it at the end, and so a lot of the presentations ended up sort of being like oh, we plan to do this, but of course these are seniors getting out of school, so they're often not going to follow through with those things. Uh, so I think if you have a whole year to, to carry out the CAP project, that would be something that you could really see a lot of changes made. And you'd see something that you started, yeah. you know, yep. at least be initiated and uh, if not concluded. So, well, that'll be a challenge to figure out how, how that, that can work. Mm -hmm. I have to tell you that I, I want to I thank the Needham Education Foundation for their support of this program because that was fabulous. Uh, Dr. Peasy and his staff and his vision to, to bring this kind of experience to you. The five of you and your classmates for really taking a chance on something that no one ever heard of before and there was no template for, there was no roadmap. And your three teachers who were pretty, and are pretty amazing, pulling together a learning experience that we've never had before, that I think was quite rich and powerful. Um, but it was made so because of the five of you. So um, congratulations, and best wishes to all of you as you move on uh, next year. And thank you, Mr. O, awesome. and Mr. Brooks, and, uh, and Mr. Hutter. Thanks for having us. Thank Thanks for joining. Thank